Good morning, church. Good morning. Save me, O God, by thy name, and judge me by thy strength. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers are risen up against me, and oppressors seek after my soul. They have not set God before them. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. He shall reward evil unto my enemies. Cut them off in thy truth. I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. For he hath delivered me out of all trouble, and mine eye have seen his desire upon my enemies. I read to you from the 54th division of Psalms, and may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Most Holy Father, we come to you this morning with bowed down heads. Just want to thank and praise you, Lord, for you're a good God, a good God, a God that can do anything but fail. He woke us up this morning, started us on our way, protected us throughout the week, and saw to it that we made it here once again to the house of prayer to learn more about you and to do your will. We want to thank you, Lord. We want to ask that you bless those that are here, bless those that are on their way, those that are lost, touch them. Let them know that without you, they can do nothing. As we go through your word today, open all hearts and minds. Lord, give me the words to express what's in this word. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our lesson today. I can get to it. Is blessing of liberty in Christ. Coming out of Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 17. And we'll go around the room as quickly as we can. Got a lot of scriptures here to read before we start the teaching. So let's um, start this morning with Sister Winston. If you would read verses 1 through 4, and Christina read 5 and 6. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where with Christ has made us free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify against to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor or to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by law, ye are fallen from grace. For we Comes not of him that calls you. A little leaven 
Eleven. Eleven. The whole month. I I have confined, but I have confidence in you to the Lord that ye will be be none otherwise minded, but that troubles you shall bear the judgment where whosoever Why do I yet? Why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offering of the cross ceases. I when they were even out of cut off, which thou would not trouble you. Amen. Uh, Dick and I. If you would finish up 13 through 17. For brethren, <clears throat> ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against, against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Amen. Blessing of liberty in Christ. The lesson our outline is in three parts. Remaining in liberty, the threat to liberty, the proper use of liberty, the time, probably AD 48, and the place from Syrian Antioch. The, uh, today's aim, the facts, to clearly see the contrast drawn between a life under the law and a life under grace. The principle to understand that we are saved by God's grace, not by our works, even though we have the tendency to feel like we need to always be adding something in. The application to live a life of freedom in the Holy Spirit and love to others. Our introduction, for some people, freedom is a frightening concept. They don't know what to do with it. <laughs> That's just like when they freed the slaves. Yeah. After they had been enslaved all those years, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to go. What am I supposed to do? The Israelites spent more than 400 years in Egypt. Most of that time, they suffered in slavery. But under the leadership of Moses, the Israelites were freed from Egyptian bondage by the mighty hand of God. And then what did they say? Oh, Why didn't you leave us there? Who in their right mind would want to go back to that slavery? No, I can't understand that Probably over two million people left Egypt bound for the land of promise. Yet only days after leaving the land of slavery, the multitude was complaining that they would have been better off remaining in Egypt. They were free. But when they encountered hardships under God's chosen leader, they longed to return to the bondage that had always that they had always known under the Egyptians. Likewise, those who have known nothing but spiritual bondage often are tempted to return 
to what is familiar to them, rather than fully embrace the responsibilities that accompany freedom in Christ. They just used to. Mm -hmm. Some folks you can't bring out. Now, Galatians 5, 1 through 6, and this is Paul talking to the Galatians. He says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast. Mm -hmm. Stabilize yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't move. Don't let anyone push you back into bondage. When he says, wherewith uh, Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again. Mm -hmm. So... They already been there. Don't go back. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And here, this yoke of bondage that he was talking about was legalism. He was talking about the law. Do not be entangled in the law. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Because that's works. Mm -hmm. That's the law. It won't benefit you a thing. Now, in the Old Testament law, that was a requirement for the Jews. But then Christ came and freed us from that. Mm -hmm. He's saying, don't go back. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. If you do one, you got to do them all. And they couldn't. That's why they was, had a yoke around their neck. They couldn't. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are falling from grace. And when you talk about falling from grace, when they fell from grace, they fell into legalism. Mm -hmm. and, and they don't mix the two of them. Grace is a gift. Legalism is work. You got to work for that. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. When, when I saw that, I found something in here. It says, now that's the fifth verse, I'll read it again. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Those who have been born again by the Spirit through faith in Christ patiently wait in faith for the certain hope or expectation of righteousness. There'll come a day when Christ will say that we have achieved that righteousness. That's what we wait for. This refers to a future time when God will publicly declare the believer righteous. Righteousness is already the believer's possession and justification, but its full realization will be experienced at Christ's coming to claim his own. So that is what we patiently wait for. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, of faith which worketh by love. So in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter circumcision or uncircumcision. It doesn't matter. What matters is faith which worketh by love. So when we hear talk like 
in that verse 4, he's telling them, if you pursue the law, you are fallen from grace. Now, Paul had already talked to these Galatians, and they caught on, but something happened along the way. Other people got in their ears mm -hmm. and were trying to tell them, well, if you do this, it'll put you a little bit closer. And, and mind you, the Jews, you know, sometimes we get caught up in tradition, following things, and, and that's what they did. They were circumcised. But there were some Gentile converts in there that had grasped hope, hold to Christ. They believed in Christ. Now they're in their ears. Somebody's in their ears saying, well, you know, you need to be circumcised. And even, let's bring it up to today. Uh -huh. Let's bring it up to today. A lot of times, we get a misunderstanding. I'll give you an easy one. Back, water baptism. There's nothing at all wrong with water baptism. But we do it to identify with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. It doesn't put us any closer. It doesn't bring us any closer to salvation or any of that. But you get somebody in your ear time, you got to be baptized. The minute they join the church, you got to be baptized. Well, do you? Is it going to take anything away from you? If you're not, that's water baptism. Mm -hmm. That's not spiritual. And so we have to be careful about things like that because it becomes a work. There's nothing wrong with it, but when Christ died on the cross, he did it all for us. We don't need to help him in any way. And we have a tendency to always be trying to help. Remaining in liberty. He said Christ has made you free. Stay free. Don't let people burden you with these things about what they want to tell you. You have to do. Believe and have faith in what he has already done. Any questions or comments in the first section remaining in freedom? When I read the first thing I came to my mind was that a lot of people get caught up not only in the baptism but the Lord's suffering. But it's a commandment that we do it. It's not something that we to earn our salvation. Exactly. And we need to emphasize just that. And then I said something he said earlier. He has a plan. And I like how Paul came forth. Uh, in this lesson, this particular lesson, like I said, you have to take it, the Bible in this whole that once you come to it, you shouldn't just take what everything a man says because the Bible tells us once you hear someone speak, you're supposed to be able to go back to the Bible and see that God said. He says, search the scripture. So there's no reason for us to wonder. That's when we have a doubt because we start using our mind and saying, oh, I need to do this. Oh, I'm going to look and see how they do this. But God has told us that we are supposed to be going to his word. I like how he was saying that a lot of things was coming out. People going to tell you, you got to do this. You got to do that. But remember, False prophets can make it look so good and sound so good. But that don't mean that it's God. It's from God. So it, it behooves us to know that, it, that we cannot do anything to earn our salvation. It's a gift. A gift, you don't pay nothing. You mm -hmm. just receive it. And that's what God is calling God letting Paul say. Just receive that what God did, he sent his son, he died on that cross, and it's finished. Ain't nobody got to add nor take nothing uh, with it. So don't add 
nor take away, but stated just like Jesus said, your salvation came through the what Jesus said. Yeah. And there's nothing that you can do to Nothing. Do. Nothing. And take the mic. What I had, I was when you were reading the introduction, mm -hmm. I know this is getting a little bit off topic. A little bit. But you said right here, those who have known nothing but but spiritual bondage mm -hmm. often are tempted to return to what is familiar to them. Right. And uh, I know it sounds crazy, but the first thing I thought about was the movie Shawshank Redemption. When this guy, he was finally free, and he wound up killing himself because he didn't know he didn't know what to do. Didn't know. And he didn't know where they were, just like the Israelites, just like the children of Israel. They were gone. They, they were they were out, but they, just one little hardship, and all of a sudden they're ready to turn back to bondage. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. ah, the one who freed you is going to protect you still. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. That's a good example too. Now, the threat to liberty. That's verses seven through twelve. He did run well. Who did it hinder you? that ye should not obey the truth. Now, Paul is saying to him, you started out great. Mm -hmm. You took hold to what I told you. You believed in Christ. Mm -hmm. And you were running, mm -hmm. but somebody got in there and hindered you. Who? He said, who? Who did it hinder you? that ye should not obey the truth. I wrote a scripture, Galatians 1, 6 and 7. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. And that's why we have to be careful who we listen to. Mm -hmm. Search the scripture for yourself. You can't take hold and latch on to everything that somebody tells you just because they're coming from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Because we all make mistakes. Right. We're not perfect. We're not. So Paul wanted to know, who did it hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you, and the him that calleth them was God. I know you didn't get it from him. Mm -hmm. Is what he's saying. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. That's like a little lie. One person can tell that lie. And somebody else get it. They got it and gone. You ever heard somebody come to you and say, you know, so-and-so died. Oh, they did? When? Yesterday. So-and-so told me. And then now you on the phone calling somebody else that knows so-and-so. Oh, I just heard so-and-so died. And then you find out so-and-so is not dead. <laughs> it has happened. Oh, yeah. Yes, it has. It has happened. Yes. We have to be careful yeah, we with stuff like that. And here, that leaven in this scripture, because when we hear it, we usually think about sin. You know, a little bit of sin becomes a, a lot of sin. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just carries down. Uh, but here we're talking about legalism. All right? So think about it this way. A little bit of the law spoils a whole month. Because in a congregation, you got somebody in your ear 
telling you what you got to do. Now you gonna tell sister so and so, oh you know we got to do that. We, I thought we was finished, but we ain't. Cause we gotta complete this before we're all the way in. You can mess up a whole church mm -hmm. with a little bit mm -hmm. of left, a little bit of legalism. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause there's no such thing. Now the Jews, when they started counting, they was in at 600. And 13, which ended up being so much more. And then they were di dividing it into sections. I mean, they had so many laws. It was laws about the material mm -hmm. of your clothing. You had to have a certain type of material. There were dietary laws about what you could eat and what you couldn't eat. I mean, the laws were just <laughs> maddening. They never stopped, and nobody could keep them. Thank God for Jesus. I'm latching yeah. on that law about dietary. They were six specific things, but it, but their food can't touch other food. And I thought that was just weird as heck because it's gonna touch each other when it comes to your stomach. Exactly. So, and I had a client like that too who <coughs> showed me how to cook her meal. I'll never forget her. And she said, no, don't put that near there. Leave this here. Don't put that on that plate. Put that on this. This, that, and other. And I asked her, I said, why are you doing this? And she said, this is the way I was taught to eat in my religious background. And she said, and that can't touch that. I said, but then he's going to touch it when it go in your stomach. And um, she said, that's not the point. The point is, it can't touch it on the plate. And I said, okay. All right. yeah. Yeah. So, so you yeah. see, that's work. And she was Jewish, yeah. That's work. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. It is. It's very hard. Now, when we talk about that leaven, false teaching, Think about that. You got somebody teaching you false things. Look how that spreads. The pastor that was doing so well and I've forgotten his name because this was years ago. But he, something, the devil, I ain't gonna say something. Right. The devil got in his head and told him that there wasn't no hell. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You remember that? And he came to church yeah, and yeah. preached that. Yeah. But the members got up and walked. Out. And walked. Mm -hmm. False teaching. We have to be careful. But you know what? That shows that they knew the Bible. And that's a good you thing. You know what I mean? And, and when you know the Bible for yeah. yourself, as soon as somebody says something that don't line up with the word, you automatically know that. It hits you. Yes, yes. And I, where did this come from? Yeah. The devil. Uh -huh, exactly. The devil. So, 10th verse says, I have <coughs> confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. Paul is telling them, I, I have confidence because you have been really taking hold to all of this false stuff that's coming at you. And I have confidence that you won't. See, he, he believes in them through the Lord that they will choose grace instead of legalism. He has that confidence that they will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. He had that confidence too. Yeah. Because God said, vengeance is mine. Amen. When he come in and try to turn his children and his establishment upside down, you will repay. Or you will get paid. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Because now the false teachers and the Judaizers were saying, they were falsely accusing Paul and saying, he taught 
circumcision. That's right. It was a lie, mm -hmm. but that's what they were telling. And they'll tell anything to turn you off from somebody else. That's right. See, he, he said, but if I was preaching that, mm -hmm. then why am I being persecuted? Because right. if he was preaching circumcision, they wouldn't have any reason mm -hmm. to come after him. He'd be doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. He's telling them, wake up yeah. and see this picture. He says, then is the offense of the cross cease. That's what he was preaching. He was preaching the cross. Right. He was preaching crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Jesus crucifixion. Jesus death, burial, resurrection. If I'm teaching circumcision, then I wouldn't be able to teach the cross. Mm -hmm. They're two different things on two different sides of the scale. But people didn't believe what he preached either. They didn't believe that. I would, they were even cut off, which troubled you. Mm -hmm. Paul was so disgusted with these Judaizers and the false teachers that he wished, and in our reading it says, he said he wished they was cut off, but it also says that because they were trying to push circumcision on these people, he said, I wish they would castrate themselves. It sounds harsh, but that's the way he felt. You know. Don't push the law. This was Old Testament law. And you done got away from that. The Lord done freed you from that. Right. When I see this, the blessing of liberty, the blessing of freedom in Christ. I don't want to do no nothing extra that I don't have to. Because he already did it for me. Amen. And, you know, in our book, it told the story about a bird. And it said the bird was tied to a pole. And all that bird could do was just fly around in a circle. It couldn't fly off because it was tied. But a rope was long enough on it that it could just go so far and fly around. So this man came up on this. And he felt sorry for the bird. He paid, it says, a large price to, to, free, the to free the bird. So he cut the rope. But the bird just continued going around to it. fly around the pole. Couldn't accept mm -hmm. the freedom. Mm -hmm. And that's a good example. Yes, it is. And, and even today, <coughs> people are bound by law, tradition. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the church is a place that we need to be really careful mm -hmm. because tradition creeps in and it becomes a heavy load on some. You know, we think about uh, First Sunday, and it's nothing wrong with being in unity with one another and say, on First Sunday, we're going to wear black and white. And that's fine if that's what we want to do. But it should not be a requirement. What if you don't have any black? What if you don't have anything white? Does that mean you're going to be excluded? It's little things that we have to be careful about. Yeah, it happens a lot in church. It happens a lot. People are turned down. Uh, Deacon Prince was talking to me about when he was younger. He wanted so bad to be a part of the choir out there in Lackawanna, that's where he lived. But the requirement was you had to be baptized before <laughs> you could join the choir. No, a lot of churches had that one. Mm -hmm. Works. <laughs> Works. 
Why? Why? Nobody ever asked that question. Why do I have to be baptized to sing in a choir? I want to serve the Lord. And that's what his children are here for. And you're going to restrict me from doing that because I'm not baptized. And then in order to be baptized, you got to join the church. Too. you got to join. So it See? keeps, it's a, it's it's, a it's systematic just, thing going on. Yes. Legal, legalism, like right? yes. you just said. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful. Yep. The Lord said, serve me. That's it. You're free from all of that. We already talked about baptism. It's nothing wrong with baptism. But that should not be a requirement. Mm -hmm. But that's man. See, it's not in the Word. Mm -hmm. right. That's man. Man is the one that sets the rules. If I want to be, uh, I'll leave that alone. Yeah, but what Jesus mm -hmm. said before he ascended for the last time, he told his disciples, to baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. He did make it a requirement, but I think you're, you're able to still come to him if you don't do it. Right. Well, it's you not. You know what I mean? It, it, it's not a requirement. Because when you get baptized, or water baptized, right. see, when he died, everything became spiritual. Mm -hmm. Talk about the spiritual baptism. Mm -hmm. The water baptism is something that we do to identify. You weren't here when we said that. But to identify with his death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing at all wrong with it. Mm -hmm. But some people want to pressure folks mm -hmm. into doing it like you have to. Okay. It's not going to keep you from mm -hmm. having a relationship mm -hmm. with God. With God. Right about that. It's yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. That was all about being born again. Oh, okay. Yes. So, we just, you know, and we do it. A lot of times we turn folks Oh, away yes. from the church yes. because of tradition, mm -hmm. restrictions, rules mm -hmm. that we put in place. It shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. You want to join the choir. Nobody has to make you. And like he said, they did. They went and got baptized. And that afternoon when church was over, it went straight to the bar. Right. So <laughs> what did it mean? They did it because they wanted to join the choir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you get right with God, your reason for doing things is going to be a lot different. And have to line up with God. Exactly. I mean, it's not all the time you're going to line up. That God says, that the redeem of the Lord says. And so when he started that, it's like everything that he brought onto, he taught them what salvation is all about. We don't teach before we let some jump in and do things. And I, I believe you got to have faith in what you're doing. God don't want to deal with people doing anything. He said, let the redeem of the Lord say so. So when he called, so when he called you, and you know that God is calling you, we got a lot of gifts out there. But gifts come without repentance. So everybody have a gift you can put uh, on them as a child of God. So I believe that, yes, you have to realize who God is before you jump up and really try to do anything. And I have to be taught this. I can't just run to the bar and think, it's some standards that God has set. And it's not hard. It's not easy. All he's saying is believe. So um, I know as a child, I saw my sisters doing it. And they allowed us to sing up until we was about 12 years old. Then they did ask us, do you know, do you believe? They put us on the morning nights. So 
we'll know who God is. Then I start really realizing this is something different. It's just not because my mother told me. I start realizing from the word. If the word don't stop being taught, because I'm gonna tell you, I don't I can't remember the day that I wasn't in church. But I remember at a certain age, I realized from going to church and from other people, I needed to read my Bible. And we need to stress that because people come and work in the church, and yeah, they do go to bond. Some say they believe it. That's not for us to, to judge. But the thing is, you got to say you believe. You got to, you have, have, to have a believe. conviction. You can't just, uh, like I said, uh, say wake up in the morning and say, okay, I'm going, and I want to do that. Uh, it, it, it comes with believing and having faith. The whole journey, you got to have faith in him before you work for him. Because you, there's a lot of them that's out there working but never got the faith. So they, they're they just like the false teachers. And we'll we got to be very we'll careful. get to that okay. in this last part. We'll get to this. But you hear people saying, find you a good church home where you have somebody that's teaching you yeah. the word. But look, look at our little group here. So we can't say that people aren't being taught if they're not being, they're not being taught because they're not here. Because mm -hmm. the, the Lord supplies his people, they're going to teach you. And it's funny how she said that because I didn't know anything about God. I didn't know anything about the word, but I was drawn. The Holy Spirit drawn me. You. And I didn't understand why. I didn't understand why I wanted to do the things I did. But I did it because uh, something in me drew me to be, yeah, to be a choir director, to be um, an usher. I mean, at a young age. But I didn't know exactly all the the, the details and the fine the, the fine fine roots of, of Christianity. But God drew me and kept me coming and kept me looking at it, kept me being involved in it until I did grab hold of it. Mm -hmm. So I think God has a way to pull us. You know what I mean? He does. And and have us be in the midst of where he wants us to learn before we learn it, you know, you, we, we don't come in. Even when we join the church, we don't know everything at that moment. But, being, but being pulled in by that Holy Spirit and by God keeps you um, longing, keeps oh, yeah. you searching. And that's one thing that I found out how I got so involved in the church because something kept long keeping me with that longing to, to learn more. To learn more. Mm -hmm. Now the third part is the proper use of liberty. 13 through 17. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. I mean, just because you've achieved salvation doesn't give you the right to say, okay, I'm in now, and I can you still do anything. It's just like, you know, mm -hmm. as Christians, we're still, this, this, the old, yes. the old man is still yes, there. Is. See, can't fool ourselves about that. Mm -hmm. But, and we said, we're not perfect. We know that we can uh, confess our sins. And he will forgive us. Amen. We can repent and ask for forgiveness. But that doesn't give us the right to think we can just do we anything do we it. want. Mm -hmm. Because all I got to do is, is just confess it. And I'll be back in right standing. No, that's not the way it goes. So he's saying, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, mm -hmm. but by love <coughs> serve one another. Mm -hmm. By love serve one another. 
For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even at this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's what he asks us. Is that easy to do? No. But he gave us a helper, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. to help us to, to do these things. If we listen, if we follow, if we walk in the Spirit, because we have a choice. We have a choice. But if ye bite and devour one another, mm -hmm. and a lot of that goes on too, mm -hmm. not getting along, mm -hmm. take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. When there's constant fighting back and forth, bickering, fighting, you eat each other up. Mm -hmm. He says, be careful of that. This I say then, walk in the spirit. Yeah. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now I, let me see what I have here. In Romans 8, <coughs> In Romans 8, and I'm going to go up to verse 8 and come down to 13. It says, so then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Mm -hmm. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that, the spirit of God dwell in you. Mm -hmm. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye, verse 13, live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The sons of God. And verse 17 says, For the flesh lusted against the Spirit. There's a constant war going on all the time. And that's talking about us, y'all. This fleshy body. There's a constant war, and we want to do right, but we can't. We know to do right, but we don't. A constant war, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other. They don't mix, okay? So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. I went to Genesis chapter 6 and I ran up on the scripture that I passed the speech on. He want to be here 120 years and it ain't nothing wrong with that if the Lord bless him. But we find out that man grieved God with the simple ways, that that was a punishment to them. Because they have been living so much longer than that. Mm -hmm. right. So right. even that 120 years was a punishment because they grieved God. Uh, Genesis 6, I said 3, mm -hmm. but I'm going to come in with verse 1. It's talking about the wickedness 
of man. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, verse 3, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also, he also is flesh, sinful flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Hundred and twenty years. Then the sons of God and the daughters of man came together in a manner that resulted in sexual sin serious enough to cause God to limit human life mm. to 120 years. Wow. Who continually or what continually wins the war? Is it flesh? Or is it the spirit? We want the spirit to continually win the war. And how do we accomplish that? We accomplish that like we do so many other things that we want to achieve. Practice. Practice. Let the spirit lead you. You might have a mind to go to the fire. Listen to the spirit. Mm -hmm. If the spirit say don't go there, follow the spirit. You got friends out there that's still doing those things. They still going to the fire. They still going to the park. And they'll call you and say, girl, ain't you tired of sitting up in the house? It's a party. We going to the party Friday, and after that, we going to leave early and go to the party. You don't have to go. You can say no. That's the world calling you. But if you let the flesh overtake you, you going to say, you know, I think I am going. Maybe I see so-and-so out there. You got to make a choice. It's a, but the spirit is constantly prompting you to do the right thing. So you want to follow the spirit. You want to habitually follow the spirit. And eventually, you, you, when you get used to following the spirit, you won't even want to do those things. At, at first, it might be hard for you. Because mm -hmm. that's what you used to do. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but eventually, I used to go to the box, Maxie's, every weekend. He would go to work, and at 11 o'clock, he got off on Friday nights, and I would meet him at the box. But when the Spirit touched me, and he said, you going to meet me tonight? I said, no, I ain't coming. And the next weekend came. No, I'm not coming. And I, and I did. And I, it was the beginning. I started back at the church. Joined the church again. Transition. Yes. And then, after I kept refusing him, he started looking to see what I was doing. That's the way it goes. Yeah. And then he came. See, and that's how the spirit works. That's how it leads you. That's how it leads you. So, we have to enjoy the blessing of the spirit, mm -hmm. of the freedom in Christ. Make it a habit to follow him. If it's the spirit, it proves that we belong to God. That's right. We can't say that's right. that we belong to him 
and we run into the bar every weekend. We cussing and fussing, just like the world. Yeah. We being hateful and mean. Yeah. We gossiping. We yeah. backbite. We doing everything that's going against God. Yeah. We're not following the Spirit, because the Spirit ain't going to leave us that way. That's right. <laughs> Enjoy the liberty, and don't pick up all that old stuff that he died on the cross for us. To have this freedom. Says final word. The thing is, is that if, you know, if I, I don't care how much you read, how much you say you do, if your love is not in it, it's not a dog. That flesh is going to lead you to what you said you love. So if you say you love Christ, it will lead you to Christ. So what do you love? Who are you in love with? If you're in love with the sin, the sin is sin. And then, you find out when you do those things, you do be saying, oh, I'm going to church, oh, but I shouldn't, you know, I can't do this, and I can't do that. It's show me which way you're going. Exactly. Oh, that, because love will change you. Love will want you not to hurt anybody. Love will stop your back biting. Exactly. Love will reach out for you. That's you ain't got to worry about if somebody going to check on me if I'm all I'm right or not. Love going to do it. Because God said, that is him. That's an attribute of him. That's, That's right. That's your attribute. Faith. Yeah. Faith in him. Faith, Faith leads to love. Yes. And our action is what shows it all. Right. We, we can't judge folks, but the action speaks louder mm -hmm. than words. Right. Mm -hmm. Deacon. Back in the 60s, there was a lot of people going to that house. When I went to back the whole eight, any place you went, the, ch the church was out there at the bar or something too. It was, it was, it was a big party. Pastor, Pastor know that, and I'm talking to you before that. And it was just, that was it, was, it was just rampant out there. People, they working in steel plant, making a little change. Just coming, coming from south too, and they ain't never know a situation like this. It was having a good time. God will. All right, everybody ready? Right Excuse me. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord, for another day that you have made, Lord, continue to bless this house, Lord, continue to touch each and every member of this house, Lord, in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.